there. Today we're going to tie this. This is the Bjergheim fly. This is a small double hooked fly uh, that's specifically uh, designed and, uh, and developed at the banks of, uh, of the river Bjergheim. So if you're going to Bjergheim to fish for salmon, then you will not want to leave without this fly. This, uh, we're going to tie this in a size 6, but it's really, really good in smaller sizes as well. So, so maybe, maybe tie some in, in 6, 8, 10, maybe even 12. Uh, and and uh, that will be a really, really good start for, for, for a fly box designed for fishing for Bjerg, fishing Bjerg, Bjergheim. This fly will also do very well in Mendale and all the other Norwegian uh, rivers. So a good, good all-round smaller double hooked fly for the Norwegian salmon. Look no further. Here is the Bjergheim fly and here is how you're gonna tie this fly. Now we're gonna tie the fly. So this is the Bjergheim fly. Uh, a fly designed specifically for the for the Bjergheims elva in, uh, in Norway. As I said. So basically the first thing we need is the uh, the hook. And this, we're gonna use a, a, a brown a double hook. It's the Kamasain. B uh, 270. Uh, it's it's a nice hook, a very very good hook, um, that that really is strong and and works very well for flies uh, like this. And basically, what we need to do is is to make a really really um, a really solid and and uniform and and even. A layer of tying thread all the way down here because the body is going to be made from tinsel so so we need to have a firm a firm as firm as possible and as as uh, as as smooth as possible surface here in order to make the, the make the right uh, the, the right body so the first thing uh, we need is is some uh, some silver tinsel oval vivus uh, silver uh, french tinsel um, because we need a tag here. And I'm gonna tie this underneath so and, and I'm gonna finish this on top so that it, uh, it, it, will, it will help make the, the body as as smooth as possible. So only use a few turns of the thread here and then what we do is we're gonna take this from down under then above then underneath, so I took this, see, here it's fastened, took it above, around, underneath, and then basically I, I, I do this in, in eight turns, in the figure eight turns, because if I do this correctly, then I can simply just pull this tag all the way up here, by pulling together at the end and then I will get a really really nice tag oh I need one more on this side in order to get it uniform and complete and then I have it it will end on the on the ups uh, the top side and then I can simply just tie this down here and I will have the best way of doing a tag on a double hook like this we don't need all of that just gonna cut away some of this, and now we need the tail. And for this fly, the tail is composed of the uh, of the crest feather from uh, from the golden pheasant. So we're gonna find a nice small, smallish crest feather here. We don't need the biggest one because this fly is not that big. This is a size six, but um, but for this pattern, you can easily go. Uh, you could easily go go smaller. So, took one of the small feathers here and just added it. There we go. That's the tail. Quite minimalistic. And uh, and we need a, t uh, uh, a rib for the uh, for the uh, for the for the body as well. And that's going to be gold, so it contrasts with the silver. And I'm going to attach that to the underside. So basically, I, I do the trick where I, I loop it a loop it around the tying thread, and then basically just tie this down here. And now I'm just going to move the tying thread up along the hook shank here, with all these things being tied down, all the way along. Uh, all the way up here again to ensure that I have an even an even um, 
surface for when I'm going to do the, uh, the rest of the body with the uh, tinsel. And you, you probably need to move a bit further up than what you would expect. Because otherwise you will get a very, really long head for your fly. Uh, and, and, uh, and we don't have a front hackle on this uh, to, to cover up, kind of, if you make any mistakes. It's only going to be wings and then a false hackle, so, so you, you, you got you to gotta stop fairly close to the eye. Then I'm going to take a piece of uh, a strand of, of this uh, uh, mylar tinsel. It's silver on one side and gold on the other, and the body has to be silver, so I have to turn tie this down with the gold side pointing up. Again, I don't use too many turns of the thread here. And then I'm going to go like this. See, in the first way down, I'm not that careful uh, because we're going to cover it up in the in the second go. But but you know, be fairly careful not to get it too much overlapping because if it gets if it gets uh, too much overlapping, then it won't be even. And down here, it's really important that you cannot see any tying thread uh, from under the. Uh, under the tinsel, it does. I'm pretty sure it doesn't affect how the fly fishes, but but make sure that you cover up all the black tying thread here. Otherwise, yeah, your your fly will not be, you know, as as nice and as good looking as as it as it should be. Just gonna see. Nope, there is no tying thread visible anywhere. I'm gonna turn my rib here. Oh, uh, before you do that, is if, if you have a lot of time and, and you're going to tie a lot of these, then maybe uh, maybe stop at this location and then, then varnish uh, the body here. That will give you a way, way more uh, a durable fly. But uh, I don't have time for that to, to dry. That would take ages if, if I were to show you that. So basically, I just, uh, I just move forward with turning the rib here. And of course, you want this to be as as evenly distributed as as possible. That's that's one of the things that makes these salmon flies tricky to tie. It's to get the exact um, get the exact distance between the turns of of a rib like this. I think I got a pretty decent decent distance here. So. Now all we need is, is the two wings, the false hackle, and then uh, some jungle cook. The first thing is is uh, the first wing is going to be uh, is going to be kingfisher blue, and it's going to be sparser than the than the black one. I use uh, Arctic fox, but you can use you can use squirrel, you can use a lot of different things. But the Arctic fox here is is nice for this pattern uh, because it's it's very lively in the water and it's not too dense. So it, it doesn't make this fly look too big. Basically, I pulled out some of the, the woolly part here and also some of the longest the longest hairs here in order to, to give this a, a bit more uniform look. And this should be about reach about down to where the uh, where the uh, the actual um, tail is. So like this, that was the blue part. Gonna cut that away. Only used about two or three turns of the thread because we don't have too many turns of the thread here because that will give you a too bulky head on the fly. And now we need to tie the uh, the black part of uh, of the wing here. Again, I'm gonna pull out all of the woolly parts here. This is also Arctic Fox. And then if you see, you see this is really really long. I'm gonna pull out the longest of these. Like that, and the 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 black part of the wing should be a bit longer than the blue part. Now that's not that's a bit too long.
Let's see how this works out. Yeah, that's better. There we go. Only slightly longer than the blue. Cut away everything. And now it's time to do the hackle. And for the hackle I'm gonna take a soft hackle feather in, um, in Kingfisher Blue as well. And we're going to tie this underneath and we're going to do it uh, the, the old fashioned way I was about to say. The, the way that, that you, you do a false hackle is um, first you take the feather and then you cut away the tip here about where you want the, uh, about where you want the, uh, the length of, of the hackles. So now I have about this, this is maybe, no that's, that's probably fine. And then I, I strip away all this other part. Then I cut off the bottom of the feather. So now what I have is kind of like this broad V shape here. And you want this broad V shape to, you can see that the, the hackle actually has a, a natural curve. And you want that to be underneath, so like this. And the way I'm going to tie this down is I'm going to put the uh, put the hackle stem through the eye here. Oh, yeah, I'm going to show you. So I'm going to put the hackle stem through the eye here. I'm going to hold down on there and then make a turn. So basically, you see, now I've just made one turn of the tying thread and, and folded the hackle. And then I'm going to pull on the hackle here. And that will give me a nice throat, a nice false hackle. Then I try to distribute this with my thumb so it's all the way, all the way out to the sides of, of, the, of the hook, as you see there. And then I'm going to tie it down. And then in order to cut this away, I'm going to pull back the hackle through the eye. Cut away every single fiber here, tie a bit, use a bit more tying thread. And there you have the perfect, the perfect false hackle, the perfect throat hackle. Now all there's left is the jungle cock. I'm gonna go a bit further back here, just a, a couple of, of of turns of the thread in order to give the perfect, uh, the, the perfect, uh, the easiest way to, to do the jungle cock, and uh, and for this I'm going to use the Pro Sports Fisher uh, HD uh, jungle cock. Those are the best fake jungle cocks around. If you have real jungle cock, you can of course use that, but they're so hard to come come by these days, um, and uh, almost impossible to 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 get anywhere. So so I use the uh, I use these artificial ones. And basically, before I use them, I just I just stretch them a bit, so it makes them easier to uh, to use. And then, of course, I attach this to to each side as the cheeks to each side of the fly here. There we go. There we go. I'm gonna cut away. Uh, one of them is a bit longer than the other one. That's perfect. Gonna cut away the rest of the jungle cook here. And then all there's left to do is basically to to tie down all your materials, create the small head, make a whip finish and then apply as many times of varnish as you like in order for this to be uh, strong, durable and also a bit shiny depending on, on what you like. But there you have it. The Bjergheim fly, uh, I'm sure this fly will, will perform excellently also in, 
in uh, in all the other Norwegian rivers, uh, probably in in Denmark as well. This would probably be a be a very very good fly for um, for sea trout in Denmark as well. But for Mendale and Otra, Bjergheim, all those different uh, different uh, out now, all those different uh, different uh, rivers. This will be a good fly. And this will work perfect in in Auckland as well. I'm sure of that. Stjørdal and Mendal and Verdal and all those different uh, different stretches, uh, the different rivers as well. But uh, there it is, the Bjergheim fly, small, nice and and a bit classic in its in its expression. So, uh, thank you for watching. As always, remember to uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And uh, and you can of course find the full and complete material kit for this fly on my web shop. It's called Nordic Anglers, and uh, and there you can find a lot of different. Uh, yeah, we have more than twenty, more than twelve thousand. Uh, fly tying products, so so we have uh, we have really really an, an insane amount of, of stuff. Swing by there uh, for for inspiration, or uh, if you wanted to place an order, that would mean a lot to us. Thank you for watching. Uh, yeah, take care out there and good luck out on the water.